Congratulations! You're finally a final year student. You finished all your exams, or at least most of them. Your imaging procedure competencies is basically complete, and you've jumped over all these hurdles. You're good to go, you're stress free, and then you realize you have a research project to do. Yeah. So all these stress come flooding back again, and you're stressed out and you don't know where to start. But before you get started on that paper, you need to listen to these tips. Tips on how to choose the best radiography research topic for you. You don't have to go through your anatomy exams, imaging assignments, and clinical competencies alone. Subscribe to Active Tech for helpful tutorials and vlogs. Let's make the journey from the classroom to the extra room much easier. Hi there, if it's your first time seeing me, my name is Donna and I'm from Axaratech.com, a blog with a medical professional in mind, specifically radiographers, because we see that we lack some representation on several platforms, so I thought, why not? Today we're going to get into the tips and the things that I think that you need to know in order to avoid some hurdles, some real crossroads, crossfire down the line, things that's going to make this process far easier. And maybe you might want to share this with some friends because you don't want to set them up, right? If you know you how to share. First things first, simplicity is key. Yes, we want to be unique. Yes, we want to have something that no one else has seen before. Yes, we don't want to just steal somebody's idea. But at the same time, we don't want to overcomplicate things. When things get overcomplicated, you tend to lose the true meaning and the true purpose, the true essence of the paper, and you end up all over the place, right? My thing is, if you can't generally explain what your research is about and what you aim to prove or do within about a minute or two, then chances are you have complicated it, it's too wordy, you're not sure where you're going and you need to refine it a bit more. So for example, my research paper, when I did mine, I spoke about the fact that many non-healthcare professionals within the hospital staffing system, right, they aren't aware of ionizing radiation, what it is, what it does, and how to protect themselves from it. You would see people just running into the extra room, escorts, people not even knocking, people don't care, and yeah, that's okay if I get zapped, like, I don't want to have children anyway, I don't have any children, I good. Ma'am, so, <laughs> it's not like that, okay? So I really saw that, okay, they're taking this thing for granted, maybe they, they just don't know, right? So I aim to show that only a certain, a small amount of persons were fully aware and had good knowledge on radiation safety, whereas others didn't. And that's what my project was about, right? I also gave some recommendations on how to fix that. And that's my explanation. I think that that was pretty clear, but if you're fumbling, going around in circles, and you can't really say what your project is about, and you leave people more confused than they were in the beginning, chances are it needs refining. The next point that I want to make is that quantitative data equals straightforward statistics. When we reach the statistical portion of our um, project, we tend to get stressed out because that's when the chi-square test comes into play, the p-test, the t-test, means and modes and all the drama that's associated with statistics, things that you already have to learn and, and or reflect on and remember and now you're going to have to apply that to your instrumentation so you don't want to get it confused right quantitative data has to do with numbers things you can measure things you can count if you can add it multiply it divide it take it away you know for a fact that it is quantitative data and it's easy to say that xyz amount did this so xyz amount proves this it's easy to prove quantitative data However, when it comes to qualitative data, it's more based on like opinions, thoughts, feelings, interviews, you know, people sharing what they think about certain things and that leaves room for suggestion, it leaves room for doubt and though it's good in terms of maybe a portion of your, your project that might say, I want to show what these people feel. It may not help with the statistical portion in terms of getting the numbers, crunching down on the numbers and proving something scientifically, right? You know, science is, is, well, should be anyway based on fact and not thought and opinion. So yes, you would have your qualitative data somewhere in there, but you at least need one or two 
official defining statistical questions or data types within your research project. Trust me, your lecturer will appreciate it when they see that statistics and it's clear as day. Moving on from that though, in point number three, I think it's really important to mention that the way in which you select your questions that make up your instrumentation or your statements that you want people to rate, whether it's a scale, whether you're counting, whether you're making notes of how many people selected what answer. You want to make sure that your answer is viable, like it has a part to play in the, in the research, otherwise why are you including it? And this is something I heard my research lecturer back then say to many, many students. Why are you including this if it does not help solve one of your objectives? What is the purpose of it being there? We're talking about the way cars drive at night, right? The way, I don't know, the traction is on the road. This is very random, right? Why are you then telling me about the sun shining in the day? Those two things literally have nothing to do with each other. So for example, if you want to say that the field of radiography is dominated by women, right? You're going to be checking male versus female. You might be checking age because you want to specify what are the ages of persons that are within our field and how long do they last within the field, right? This is very random. I'm not saying you need to choose that specific one, but that's just an idea, okay? So if you're going to be talking about that, why you want to know what color dress the women are wearing? Why you want to know what brand of scrubs they wear? What does that address within your research? And this is something that a lot of students lose a lot of marks for. And in order to avoid that and to really way back in and really refine what you're doing, you need to consider that as well. And the last thing that I want to say is find a way to conserve. Conserve your time, conserve your space, declutter. You don't have to have paper, let's say of some trees, you don't have to have paper in order to tabulate your results, in order to store or attain your results or your questionnaires, interviews, whatever have you. I personally recommend using Google Forms because not only do they allow you to have an electronic store of your data, you're also able to categorize it and they even throw in an extra feature where you get pie charts and bar graphs that you can simply copy onto your file. So I definitely recommend Google Forms for that. No, this video is not sponsored, your girl in reach there yet, right? However, I think Google Forms or any other um, any other service similar to it would be better in order to store your data and it really really does help with the organizational aspect of it. So those are my four main points on things that you really need to consider in order to avoid trouble later down the line. Because you can have the nicest topic ever and when you're done you don't know what to do with the data that you have, you don't know how to organize the data, you don't know how to put it together to prove that this is what I'm saying and it's final. So if you want to get some examples on some actual research topics similar to the one that I mentioned that has to do with the field of radiography and potential topics that you might want to choose for yourself, or recommend to a friend do check out my blog post on that I'll be linking it in the description box below you'll see the section with research topics for radiography students so yeah do check that out and it will give you a few ideas on some of the topics that I recommend and you can just take inspiration from it if you don't want those exact topics for yourself so thank you so so much for watching this video I appreciate it a lot don't forget to subscribe before you leave here and give this video a big thumbs up because it will help me out a lot in this here YouTube algorithm. Let's get the world of radiography out there. Join the Ask the Rad Tech family and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.